Hello, and welcome to another installment in the Voltais educational series, The Voltais Way. Each video in this series will include an in-depth demonstration of one or more of the features in Voltais, the most secure and efficient enterprise file access, sharing, and collaboration platform on the market today. Let's begin. In this installment, we'll be speaking about the link share policy. A link share policy allows your organization to create one or many policies that will determine how your employees share data with other individuals. You can copy the default policy and modify it, or you can create your own. Policies can be set up for various groups, such as business units, office locations, or specific groups like legal, HR, or sales, or even individuals. Sharing can be controlled via geographic locations, networking segments, or by days of the week and hours of the day. Policies can be as restrictive as you need or want, but they can also be flexible to meet the requirements of your users. When an admin logs into the Voltai server, this is the main screen they'll come to. If they come over and click here and locate policies and then click on the link share, they'll be able to either edit policies they currently have or create a new policy. Here's the default link share policy, which they can either duplicate or edit, or in this case, we're going to create a new regular policy. We're going to call this sharing via link it's a regular policy and we can do various types of fencing geofencing allows us to control countries from where those links that we're talking about the external users will receive can be accessed from so in this case you could select multiple countries in this case we're going to select all countries add that to the list Regarding network fencing or IP fencing, you can do the same thing and control what IP segments someone may or may not be able to access data from using those links. In this case, we're going to select and put an asterisk saying that they can access the links from any IP segment around the world. Click on continue and we come to time-based access. Here you can select either 24 by 7 access or select it by days of the week and hours of the day, whatever the needs of your business are. In this case, I'm going to select add 24 by 7 access access and click on continue. Now we come to allowing sharing using links and how this is going to be configured. So we'll click here and the first one we see is password or Voltai's login required. Here we can select if a password is required and if it is do we want to send that password to the external recipient via a separate email or if you may have another way of transferring that data through SMS or some other method. You can also determine how many incorrect password attempts are allowed before that link expires or becomes unusable. You can also set up the minimum number of characters for that password and how it's constructed based on either alphabet, numeric, or special characters that are need to be uh, included or required. Generally, when sharing a link with an external user from your workstation or laptop, you would be providing their email address. When the link is shared, an email is then sent to the external recipient and verification happens when they click on the supplied link. However, if you share data via a link from a mobile device, such as a phone or tablet, then you could send that link via email, SMS, or even copying and pasting the link into a chat box. Because of this, there is potentially no email address to aid in the verification of the link. So if this box is selected, when the external user clicks on the link and supplies a password, if required, then the Voltai server, instead of providing access to the data, would display a pop-up message asking for an email address to be provided. Once the address is submitted, the Voltai server will then send a new link to that email address and the external user would need to use that link to access the shared data. Also, if the person that the data is being shared with has a Voltai's ID and password, that information could be submitted instead. Clicking on the link expiry allows us to set an expiration limit for that link that we're going to send. You can do it by days, hours, number of downloads, or potentially if you send an item to a group of people, the number of unique accesses by different individuals, how many of those that you want to allow. So in this case with our policy, we're going to put in 30. With control sharing by email patterns, you have even more control of how you can share data with links. The allow sharing only with recipients having the following email pattern or patterns selection allows you to share data with all of the employees of a specific company or organization by typing something like asterisk at xyz.com. 
Or maybe you want to make sure that no one from your competitor's company could access the link and learn about your company's private information. So you could select to do not allow sharing with recipients having the following email patterns and type something like asterisk at competitor.com. If you select to not allow certain patterns, you can also select this checkbox to avoid sharing with public email providers such as yahoo.com or gmail.com. We continue to add public email providers to this list if you wish to ensure that your data is only shared with specific company email addresses. Click on continue. Now we come to the share link permissions and these are the permissions that when we go to see from the end user's point of view of how they're going to share data externally, we'll see these selections being turned on or not visible. If they, we have them as always on, the end user will see all of them. If you have them as always off, they're not going to be visible to the end user so they don't know that there are possibilities that they could choose from. Or in this case, we're actually going to pick let sharer choose, meaning we'll make all the options available and rely on our end user to determine the appropriate method as to how the data can be shared. So let's talk about each of the permissions in greater detail. If you show the items in a list, you'll be able to see the various items that have been shared with that external recipient. If there's a folder that's been shared, there could be multiple files underneath. Each of those files will be listed and the individual can see them. Online View will actually provide an online viewer that comes up to show your external recipient what that file looks like. They wouldn't have any edit capabilities to be able to print it, to be able to do anything else with it other than to view it. If you allow them to print, be exactly what it says, they're going to be able to print that file or that view that you've given them. With upload, if you as an internal person create a folder, you can then share that folder externally and request that people upload data into that folder. So not only is this a one way out where you're sharing data with someone externally, you can actually have data that's external be sent into you so you have one place to collect all that information. You can allow for that external person to be able to share the item with someone else. Download indicates, much like an email with an attachment, if you let the external recipient have the ability to do a download, when they download that file, they can assume ownership of the file and they can do with it whatever they want. Edit it, print it, send it on to someone else. So basically, like I said, with an email and an attachment, once you've sent it, they are now in full control of that particular item. Regarding download DRM files and downloading of watermarked files, we'll cover those in a separate video along with how the end user would interact with the policy that we've set up for them. So at this point we would click on continue and for now just as I mentioned we will leave the DRM and watermarking items on this screen for other videos in this series. We will click on create and we will now see that this policy has been added to our link share policy screen. Once we have created the policy, we would then want to apply it to either an individual or a group of people who would then be able to use the controls of this policy to share links to data with external individuals. We hope that you have found this session in the Voltize Education Series to be informative and educational. Please visit our website at voltize.com for more videos in the series educating you on the Voltize platform. If you have any questions or comments about Voltize, please send an email to sales at Thank you.